I was teaching a 16 year old young man who was ranked about 35 or 40 in his section. He loved playing tennis and he had an explosive temper that he spent most of his time trying to contain. We'd been working together for about six months when he came to one particular lesson very excited. I said, Mr. Renner, I know exactly what my agenda is going to be for this lesson. I said, great. He said, today, my agenda is to not get angry. What do you think? I want to pause for a moment before I said, I think that's probably the most self-destructive agenda you could have chosen, which completely pissed him off. And he said, why? And I said, because we both know you're going to get angry. And when you do, you will not only be angry, but you will be double angry because it will mean you failed to accomplish your agenda. He said, okay, fine. Then what should my agenda be? I said, I don't know. How about you want to become aware of the moment you get angry? And if possible, know why you get angry. He said, okay, great, I can do that. Well, we went through the Telos Tennis warm-up progression all the way to playing points. We had one incredible point where he was moving me from side to side, up and back, and then he pulled me way off the court to my backhand side and my shot landed short in the court and he moved in to pounce and hit a short ball down the line forehand and it smacked right into the top of the net. And then the ball fell back on his side and I thought he was going to blow up. His face turned so red and he put his racket over his knee like he was going to break it and he yelled like, this is what makes me angry. I do everything right to set the point up and I miss the easy ball. I hate it when I choke and I choke every time I get the easy ball. I can't, it just makes me crazy and angry. I let him calm down for a bit before I quietly asked him, do you have this face between your breath? And he was like, what? Do I have this face between my breath? I don't know. No, I don't. I waited another moment before I asked him, do you know where you lost the space? He said, do, do I know where I lost the space? No, no, I don't know where I lost the space. And then he started to turn his head side to side as I saw him visualizing the point. And he said, yes, yes, yes. Actually, I do know where I lost. I lost it four or five shots ago on the ball that pulled me wide to my forehand. I took my time before saying to him, well, I know an old Liberian proverb that says, look not where you fell, but where you slipped. He went for some water and we finished up the lesson without any more explosions. And then a couple of weeks later, I was at the tennis club where this young man was in the junior development program. And the program was six courts and all they did was play points and do something called up-downs. After an hour, the top point getter on each court would move up a court and the bottom point getter would move down a court. The other two players would just stay on the same court. Well, I walked in to see this young man smiling from ear to ear. Oh, very excited. Was, Mr. Renner, Mr. Renner, Mr. Renner, you're not going to believe it. I had an amazing day today. I finished as the top player on the top court. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. And I'm like, wow, congratulations. That's amazing. You know, I'm really happy for you. And he said, no, 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 no. That's not what's amazing. I said, okay, well, what's amazing? He said, how I got there. And I was intrigued. And I said, how did you get there? He said, okay, well, first, after I set my agenda, I palmed in and I became aware of the space between my breath. Then I warmed up my body and my mind, like the way we were, learned how, before I got here today. So I'd be ready right from the beginning, from the first point. My agenda was one, notice when I lose the space between my breath. Two, never play a point if I don't have the space between my breath. I didn't know what was going to happen. Then we played points. And I had to let the others take my turn like every three or four times out of every 10 balls. I had to let them go because I didn't have the space. And they thought I was crazy. But I ended up winning like almost every single point I played. And I won the court by like seven or eight points. I said, wow, that really is amazing. And he said, no, no, no. That still isn't the most amazing part. And I said, well, that wasn't amazing. Uh, for me, it was. But okay, what's the most amazing part? And he said, I realized... If I'm not ready to play four out of 10 points, then I'm not fit enough to play competitive tournaments. I need to work on my fitness. And to that, I smiled deeply and I agreed with him. 
That really is amazing. Congratulations. And that really sums up what unlocking breakthroughs is all about. I could have told this young man that he needs to be more fit to play competitive tournaments. And he would have done it, but that would have been extrinsic learning. And he would be far less motivated to actually get fit and would eventually probably stop. Instead, I set up an environment for him to discover what he needed to learn for himself. And he became aware and highly motivated to reach new levels of fitness. And you can be sure that I helped him define exactly what was meant by fitness. All right. That's it for this week. Don't forget again to hit the like button, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and until next time, enjoy the Telos Tennis Adventure.